Hey Joseph, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I'm going to show you how I cut prescription photochromic transitional gray lenses for your Versace 3168. Let me take it out of its original packaging. This is the box that Versace sends it in. Take all that out. This is all the accoutrements you get. Well, let me make sure I'm not missing any of this. apologize if anything's out of focus. I'm a licensed optician, not a professional cinematographer. But this is your Versace case. Your Versace cloth, the Versace 3168 with the Medusa with the Swarovski crystals on the inside, and of course, your card of authenticity that Versace sends with every one. So, let me clean everything up. I'm going to put your Versace cloth. Hopefully, you can make out the Medusa on the cloth there, but I'm going to put all that there. In fact, let me just put this there while it is cutting. So, I'm going to pop your original demo lenses out. This is color, was it GB1? Yeah, the black and gold. If you can read on the inside, it's Versace model number 3168. Let's see, GB1 and a 52 eye size with a 17 bridge. So I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses that come in it, the ones that say Versace on them. Pop those off. Of course, I'm going to send those to you. But I'm going to put your Italian frame into the tracing element of my Italian Santa Nelly. It is the LE1000 <clears throat> patternless edger. And the stylus is coming up and tracing the shape of the right lens, and then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy the frame, and you get free, clear, prescription, single vision lenses, or non-prescription fashion lenses, whatever you choose. Of course, you're getting prescription photochromic lenses. So I'm going to pull your shape up onto the computer. Your pupillary distance is 66.5. Uh, oops, almost there. Now, 66.5, you can see that. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle. And this is a Xyle frame, which is old school name for plastic. So, I'm going to take your lenses out. or take the frame out and let it sit there. These are your lenses. Your right eye reads plus a quarter, minus 75 at 90. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve with the protective coming it comes in. This is the Marco 101 lensometer. This is my favorite tool. I use it all day long to check prescriptions. So I'm going to set your axis at 90. Your power is at plus a quarter. First thing I'm going to do is zero out and make sure make sure everything is zeroed in perfectly. Plus a quarter, so that's only one step. I'm going to move that there. I'm going to put your lens in and rotate it until the spear power comes in cleanly. Check the cross curve, which is also known as your astigmatism. And we're looking good there. I'm going to put three dots on here which are hard for you to see, so I'm going to take my red pen and darken them for everyone at home. There's that one, that one, and that one, and that is the right lens. So I'm going to do the same thing now for the left. Your axis is the same in the left eye, which is rare. Um, usually it just it could be anywhere from 0 to 180, and both of yours are at 90, but the right eye reads plus 50, minus 1 at 90, and I'll explain your prescription a little bit. So I'm going to set the power drum at plus 50, the axis wheel is still at 90, Put the lens in, rotate it until it comes into focus perfectly. We are good to go. That is plus 50, minus 1. Put some more red dots on here. Let's darken those red dots. And that is the left. So, I need to put this block on here. This is what's going to hold it in place while it's cutting. Essentially, that's going to hold it into what's nothing more than a lathe. So I need to stick this onto your lens. This is a, called a block. This is a blocker. 3M, the same people who make the post-it notes, make my little double-sided sticky pads that I use. The black side is the sticky side, so I'm going to stick that on there. Pull away the tape, making this side sticky. And what I'm going to do is I've got an optical crosshairs, if you will. You can see this straight edge here. Let me get another straight edge. This card will act as one. So we've got a vertical meridian and a horizontal meridian. I want to make sure that I get your lenses right on that 180 and that dot is on the vertical. That way I make sure I'm zeroing in and I'm dead center of the crosshairs. Essentially it's an optical scope, just like the crosshairs of a scope. I'm going to make sure yours is dead center in there. That red dot is dead center, going to sit in front of your eye. Let's do the same thing for the left. Pop that in there. Put the little sticky pad on there. Pull the tape away. And get everything lined up perfectly and we are good to go there so I'm gonna put your right lens into the Chuck or as I like to say the Charles 
because I don't know it well enough to call it chuck. But the first thing that's going to happen is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of your right lens onto the back surface first, the concave surface. And then it's going to move over and trace the out, outer surface, which is also called the, the convex side of the lens. All the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so it sits best in the frame. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel on the left, as I just said left. It's like a heavy grid sandpaper. It's going to grind away all your polycarbonate material. And this wheel in the center with that channel, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the doors as cuts due to the sound, but for now I just want you to see as your photochromic lenses touches down onto the cutting wheel. Now your lenses are polycarbonate, which is... There's three main lens materials, glass, plastic, and polycarb. Glass is only used in a few sunglasses nowadays. No one ever gets it in their prescription glasses just for the fear if you ever drop them, glass will shatter. Or if you ever accidentally hit by anything hard enough, the glass will break and then slice your eye wide open. The second medium is plastic, which is you know very commonly used. The last one, the only one that I use, is the polycarb, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is actually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes now. You never have to worry about ever reapplying like people have to do with sunscreen. It's also an aspheric lens, meaning that it has a flatter curvature. Spherical just means round like a basketball and the cheaper lenses just have a terrible ugly fishbowl effect that bulge out of the frame. Your lenses, especially being a plus lens, a magnifying lens, is going to fit in there perfectly. The final cosmetic appearance is going to be great. So if you notice, the lens is just finished cutting. It's completely flat around the edges like a nickel. I could take it out and it would stand up on the counter by its own. So now it's actually getting the, the bevel put onto the lens. Now if you notice, there's water running in the background but the lens is cutting dry. This is just to collect dust. Now plastic and high index, they do cut wet. Polycarbonate cuts dry. Having said that, in just a moment, some water jets will kick in to start to wash away what I've just removed from the lens. It's called Schwarf. It's like optical sawdust. It's just gonna clean any residue that may be on the lens. Of course, as soon as it comes out, I'm gonna put more on there, but that's a moot point. But the machine's just trying to do its part. So you got the Versace, Versace, Versace. Yeah, the Medusa is in. The Medusa is in the house. That's what they call that little lion head that is in there. And those are genuine Swarovski crystals that are in your frame. That's why this frame retails for $295. Of course, you get free single vision prescription lenses. You pay just the extra few bucks to have the transition lenses. So I'm going to take your lens out. I do want to dry it off so it's not slippery. It's embarrassing when I drop a lens. It does happen one out of every one million, but it ain't going to happen with you because I dried it off. So before I try and mount it, you still have a little bit of rough edges here. So I want to use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets a little warm due to the friction, but it is that friction that allows me to go and put on what's known as the safety bevel. I've gone all around the edge of your lens and if you see this white powdery substance I scrape off with my thumbnail. That is called Schwarf. I just want to remove all that from your lens and once it's all off your lens I carefully collect it on the counter and then I wipe it on the floor. And in all my videos I say kids stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. If you want to make a mess like me you gotta stay in school. So I'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside corner and then using my thumbs, I press down. Oops, missed, missed, it's still alive, it's trying to fight me. Tuck it into the outside corner, then using my thumbs, I press down and it snaps in perfectly. So now I wanna go ahead and cut the left lens. I'm gonna flip that over to the left side and hit start. Just like before, the calipers are gonna come down and it's gonna trace the shape of the left side of the frame onto the left lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out. Again, beginning with the concave or the rear or the back surface, then it's going to move over and trace the convex, the front surface of the lens. 
And once this begins cutting, I'm going to continue to work on the right eye. And once it's all done, I'm going to show you as your lenses turn dark. Mr. Versace, Versace, Versace. Have you gotten any of that Versace cologne yet? It smells really nice, really nice. My wife got me a bottle of it when I picked up the Versace collection as a gift to me. Thanks, honey. It smells good. So here's your left lens. So just about to touch down. While that is cutting, I want to continue working on the right. I'm going to pop off this block. It is no longer needed. I'm going to peel away the sticker. It is no longer needed. And hopefully you can see the red dot that is still there. I do want to dry everything off. That is your optical center. That's going to be sitting dead center in front of your pupil. And I'm going to go ahead and read the prescription right there where it is written, where that dot is. I'm going to line that up in the lensometer in the center of my crosshairs. We're still on 90 since you're the same in both eyes. And I'm getting plus a quarter. That's just one tick mark above zero. And then you have yeah, three steps of, in fact, let me explain it to you. Your prescription reads, your right eye is plus a quarter minus 75 at 90. Your left eye reads from left to right plus 50 minus 1 at 90. The unit of measurement in the optical field is called a diopter, and that is spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. You've heard of ounces, gallons, and pounds where we use diopters, and everything is in zeros, everything is in quarter increments. It starts with zero, meaning no prescription. And it goes up 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1. This is a good illustration because you have all four steps here. But that's for both eyes. But So you only need one step of magnification in your right eye. You need three steps of correction for your astigmatism. And there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates. It comes and goes. This first number makes everything the correct size. The second number takes away the fuzzy edges. That's what astigmatism does. It makes everything fuzzy, like sixes and eights look alike. The letters P and F look alike. Plus, driving at night, you, get, you suffer from glare worse than others. Now your left eye, you need two steps of correction for your left eye and four steps of correction for your astigmatism. So two steps of magnification on the, to magnify to the correct size, four steps to take away the fuzzy edges, and the 90, these two first boxes are real values. This second, this last number <clears throat> goes from 0 to 180. If you imagine a circle being 360 degrees from this side to this side is 0 to 180 with 90 and 270 being the vertical meridian. So if we're going to turn that fine tune knob, which is what astigmatism is, this is the fine tune to make it crisp, from 0 to 180, we actually turn it and stop exactly halfway at 90 in both eyes. That's where we're just fine tuning the knob. So if your lens, which I'm going to take out, let me dry this off here. If you had a perfectly round pair of glasses, what did I do with them? Oh, it's still over here. Hey, let's take them out. If you had a perfectly round pair of glasses and the eye wire screw got loose and your lens rotated, if you had no astigmatism, you would still see fine. You just need a certain amount of magnification in each eye, but you would still see fine. Once you have astigmatism, the lens cannot rotate, and that's where we're doing it. I know this way would look like 90, but when it was round, this is the way it finishes up at 90 degrees on both eyes. So let me go ahead and put the safety bevel on this lens. I'm going to use my thumbnail to scrape all that off again, just like you saw, and I do this so much, I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail. And once it's all on the counter, you know what's happening, that's right, wipe it on the floor. So I'm going to mount your left lens, I have the frame held in upright position. I'm going to tuck the lens in on the side closest to me. Then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. And actually, it doesn't want to go, so it's a slightly stronger lens, so I'm going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter. A millimeter is the distance between... Where's my PD stick? Here it is. Here it is. It's unlike me. I'm the nerdy guy. I usually carry stuff in my pocket. But a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm actually going to take one-tenth of that distance off the circumference of your lens because it is, a, it is a couple steps stronger in overall total power. But when I read the prescription on here, it was plus a quarter minus 75. So if you had 25 cents and you borrowed 75 cents, you would end up having to pay back, well, 50 cents. And so that's where we're at, minus 50. Your right eye, read, I mean, your left eye reads plus 50 minus one. 
So when I read this power, you start off with 50 cents, we're going to end up at minus 50 if you lose a dollar. Because everything is in quarter increments, just like the 0.25 cents. So it's finishing up its optical bath. And once we get the lens mounted, I'm going to go ahead and show you as your lenses turn dark. Versace, Versace, Versace. Here is your white Italian leather Versace case. The Versace logo on the inside, of course. You have got the Versace cleaning cloth that's on the inside, and I will be providing instructions on how to care for this and your case so it'll last you for years. Of course, the Versace box that makes great gifts at Christmas time. Save this box, fill it with candy, give it to your nieces and nephews at the holidays. They unwrap it and they see Versace and they go crazy. Then they open it up and they're still not disappointed there's candy in there. That's what they'd rather have instead of Versace. Like, What's kids going to do with Versace? They know what to do with that candy. All right, real quick, back to the handstone. Real quick, the safety bevel. Even quicker, I'm going to scrape that off with my thumbnail and just drop it straight onto the floor this time. Let's go ahead and get it mounted into the lens. I mean, the lens mounted in the frame. I'm going to tuck it into the outside corner, then using my thumbs, I press down and it snaps right in. This block is no longer needed. I'm going to pull that off, break the traction, pull off that sticker, dry everything off again. And I do want to inspect the prescription. So we're still at 90. The, again, the left eye reads plus 50. I'm going to spin the wheel to plus 50. Perfect. Your stigmatism comes in at minus 50. So again, you start off with 50 cents, you owe a dollar, you end up with minus 50. So we're perfect there. I want to use the back of the card. Your pupillary distance is 66.5. I'm going to put the zero up at the end of my PD stick next to my thumb on your right lens. And at your left lens, you can read 66 and a half. So we are perfect dead on there. That is made accurately. Everything checks out. And before I ship them to him, one more thing I want to do. I do want to point out that every optic, well, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if you get these and they're too loose or too tight or high on one side, because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other, that's why all glasses need to be adjusted. And I'm no exception. When I take mine off and put my finger on it, they wobble because I have one ear that's higher than the other. Again, when 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other, that's the norm. When people's ears are level, I tell them you're not normal one out of five ain't average so set yours on the counter press down they're in standard alignment also want to check for the three point stance the three points are one two and the bottom of the frame being three so i press down there is no wobble flip them over same thing i make sure that each temple overlaps perfectly and they do in the same amount of tension on each thing i do each each hinge i should say it's not a thing i do know what they're called but i'm gonna use my optical grade acetone to remove the red dots off of your lenses now get everything cleaned up and now I'm going to show you I'm going to activate is what it's called which causes your lens to turn dark it's just a term we use in the profession I do want to hold them up to the light and inspect them there are no blemishes that is perfect you can see how your lenses are virtually clear now I'm going to expose them to a strong dose of ultraviolet radiation which is just a UV lamp it's my little transitions box I'm going to put that in there and hit start and as you will see all transition lenses take about 30 to 45 seconds to darken from clear it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 now all transition lenses will get dark on day one this is important listen up they will get dark on day one if you give them two weeks they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks providing they're exposed to the sun every day at the end of two weeks they're going to work for years with maximum performance the only time they will not work is when you're in your car driving and that's when everyone wants transition lenses. Now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken but your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun. That's why they won't turn dark in a car unless you have a car older than the 90s then they will darken. Again perfect in a convertible and motorcycle but they don't work at its best when it gets into the mid 90s to 100 degrees you're miserable they're miserable no one wants to work when it's 100 degrees they do work better you know when it's 85 and below so that is it these are your lenses turning dark and again don't panic they're going to keep getting darker and darker until they're almost like sunglass lenses after a couple weeks so that's it if anyone has any questions just email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com and joseph hope you enjoyed watching your glasses being made 
and everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.